show you my products. Um, my firm is called Dry Dog Coats and it is all to do with preparing dogs for the show ring. And um, the first thing I'll show you is my waterproof coat, which we'll go into a little bit more later. And my drying coat, again, we will look at it later. And this is my pea jacket, which is a half jacket used for when you're at the show and at home to keep them clean when they go out because the legs and the underneath is waterproof, stopping them from getting uh, urine onto their hair and getting it stained. Another product I have is for bitches when they're in season, which I call sunny pants. And lastly is my shine coat, which is a body coat and it has a satin lining which is to help with the shine and the flat on the coat. We'll start with the waterproof and I'll show you the features of it. It has a pull up here which means the good point is you can always pull that part up stopping them from weeing inside the actual coat which is one of the major factors with a waterproof coat. You can do the zip this way and it, if you can see it actually holds it there. It stops there for you to actually put it on and off the dog. Whereas other coats that you have to do the zip up makes it really difficult. The dog's wriggling and you lose it off the legs off it. With this one you don't. Put it over the head. Here we go back into the reverse of putting it on and it's really easy. It makes it easy to put on the dog. This is a smaller version of the coat that I was just showing you. It's fully waterproof and I'd like to see how the zip comes that way making it easier when you're putting it on the dog. It has a really nice soft quiet liner and it is fully waterproof but breathable which is really important with a waterproof coat. So we will do it back up again. It has, there is the tightener to stop them from weeing inside and we have a neck on it so that that then comes up the front of the, the dog's coat keeping all that chest hair nice and dry. We're going to actually measure the dog now. So we would want to start for the waterproof coat at the top of the neck. We would take the tape measure down, keeping it on the dog, to the end of the body. So what I'm saying is, start the tape measure, top of the neck, take it down and end at the end of the body, the start of the tail. The next measurement we need is the leg measurement. So we would start from the elbow of the dog and take it to the floor, like that. And then we'll go and write it down. The last measurement we need for the waterproof coat is the base of the neck. So take the tape measure round, like that, and that gives you the base of the neck. So again, I'll show you just round the base of the dog's neck. And then, of course, write it down. Now we're going to show it on a live dog. I'm going to bring Tina with her dog in. Here we go. Want to go that side? What's the name of your dog? Harry. Harry. There you go. Hello. Harry is going to try our waterproof coat. Harry, stand up. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, look. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Your little legs in here. There we go. Good boy. Good lad. And your other one. Like that. What a good boy. Here we go. That would be very good, isn't it? Yes, it's a good boy. 
specs in. He's a good boy. And the other one, look, he's, he's a film star. Make sure. I'm Stand sorry, up. sweetheart, but you're going to have to stand up. There you go. Stand up, Harry. Harry, stay. Good boy. Mm. Make sure that the inner flap keeps the hair out the way and go from the front to the back like that. So simple. And then we're going to tie it up like that to make sure that he doesn't wee inside like that. We will show you the measurement on the dog, the real dog this time. <laughs> so we're going to start there. Then good boy. Then See? Good this boy. Is, you get different problems when then. it's a real dog. So you're going to keep your finger on there and you're going to take it along to the start of the tail, which is there. So you're going from the top of the neck along the back to the end of the body. I'm going to show you the three Stop. measurements that we need for the waterproof coat on a real dog. We're going to start at the top of the neck and we'll take the tape measure down. There is the good boy. We're going to go to the end of the body like that. So we're going to go from the top of the head all the way down to the end of the body. That is the length measurement. Stay. Now we're going to do the girth measurement, which is all the way around the body behind the front legs and that will give you the girth. Good boy. And lastly we'll do the leg measurement. So we're going to go from the actual top of the leg down to the bottom. We just need to come round. So there is the elbow on the dog. We're going to go from there to the ground, to the floor. Or in this case to the table. Mm. <laughs> And that will give you the length of the dog. So we're going to go, we'll do it again, without the tape measure, from the elbow to the floor. We're now moving on to the drying coat. The drying coat I invented for actually show dogs with hair that sticks up, which is one of the problems that most people have. And this eliminates all that problem very easily by actually using the drying coat, you then end with a nice shiny flat coat. But to begin with, I'll show you how you need to measure your dog so that you can order a custom made drying coat for your dog. This is how I would like you to measure your dog for the drying coat. He's a good boy, good boy. Good boy. Don't frighten your dog, no. take your time and make the dog so that he's relaxed. So we would start the tape measure at the very front of the head. Take it down the neck. Oh, you Thank you. And to the end of the body. Good boy. Stand up, good boy. boy. Good boy, stay. Take your time with it so we don't frighten the dog. There. That, that's that. Mm -hmm. And that gives you that measurement which we're going to write down. Good boy. Good boy. Then we're going to do the girth. Stay. Again, like Stay. we did for the waterproof coat. We're Good going boy. to put it around the body. Take it up. Good boy. Keep make sure the dog stays straight because that can make a difference Stay. to the measurement. Good boy. There, and that gives me the girth measurement. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. He did that very well. Good boy. Take your time with the dog so that he's not frightened. Mm. Good boy. Good lad. <laughs> that would give you the length and the girth that we need of your dog. And that's all we need for the drying coat. This is another product that I make which we call a pea jacket. Very useful for its shows and for a male dog and you can take him out for a wee, not worry if he cocks his leg and he won't get any stain on his leg fringing or his under tummy. 
it has a nice comfortable body so that it can move about, breathable, but it's waterproof where it needs to be, which is namely the front going underneath and the legs. Mm -hmm. Very good. We'll just say thank you to Harry and to his mum, Tina, you. for letting yeah. us borrow him and you show you how to use my products. <laughs> thank you. This is another of my products, which is the Sally Pants. It's ideally, it's used when bitches are in season. So if you use the lady's sanitary towel, towel you could, the adhesive one will actually help to contain the blood. You would then put it on the dog by putting the legs, it through the legs and fasten it here and round and here. If you want to let the tail come out, you have elastic here which you can cut down and it would then allow the tail to come out. Keep it quite low and just do it a little. Some people leave the tail in and it helps also to keep some of the male dog's uh, interest out of it. And But you can, the good point on my Sally pants is they are more adjustable and you can actually fit them onto the dog better so that they are safer and stay on the dog. This is my shine coat. It has a nice satin lining so when we put it on the dog it actually gives a nice sheen to the coat. I'll show you to gather up put it over the dog's head like this. Has leg straps. So, and a strap underneath, which makes sure that the shine coat stays nice and firmly on the dog. This is my mesh drying coat and I'll show you how to put it on the dog. You gather it up starting with the two seams showing like that so that you know that you have it actually in the correct place. Gather it up which is very important until you get to the head and there's the head. You know that you're keeping it straight there. You then are going to place it on the dog. And you're going to pull it so that you're getting it in exactly the right place. There, that is exactly right. Coming down the head and along the body. And then you end up with the two seams either side of the tail. Looking at it you might think it's too long but don't panic because you need it to go over the end which I'll show you as I do it up. I'm then going to do the press studs up so that you're making sure what you want to end up with is a really nice snug finish. Going to put the legs through. Again, you might think it's very baggy just there, but there's a reason for it. Everything has a reason. This is where you want it to be flat. This here the same this side and further along you want all of this to be flat 
So that way you actually have it snug in all the places that you actually want to be flat. This boat going over will give you a really nice finish on the end of the body, but it will still allow the tail to move, which is really important. This strap you don't need on this particular dog, but if you have a deeper girth dog, you may need to use that strap. Now, some people don't want it on the head. So, what I would suggest, if that is the case, is you can turn it back. Do it in stages until you get to the back of the head. Take the ears out and then, because on your dog with the long hair you don't want a line, you would then tease a little bit of the hair over the top and then you won't get a line on it. However, if you want to leave it on the head, that is a no, still a good way to do it but you may want to actually let the ears out. So again, I'll show you what you would do. If you want the ears to come out, judge where the top of the ear is, and then go down so that it keeps that first fringing of hair inside the drying coat. Because that's really short just there, and it would stick up. So go slightly below there and then feel the width that you want that to be. And do not go too wide when you cut it. And obviously you're not going to cut it while it's on the dog. So you would judge where you want it, then you would take it off and just cut a slight hole to begin with, line, slight line. And then you can always make it wider if you need to, but don't overdo it. Then you can pull the ear out if that's what you want. But ideally, do it how you feel happy with and how your dog feels happy. You then, you've washed your dog, you've took the excess water out of it, and you've put the coat on. You can now choose, you can actually have a dryer on it. Some people have, with the small dogs especially, they have a dryer that they put the dog in. But the important thing is to leave the mesh drying coat on until the dog's hair is absolutely bone dry. Take it off too early and it might not work. So leave it on till it's bone dry. And then I suggest when it comes to the time, let the dog's hair cool down before you take it off. Because it can give you a false impression especially along the spine where the hair is really thick. So leave it to, to, to actually cool down slightly before you take it off. And then make sure that it's absolutely dry. And that way it will stay flat and will give you a lovely shine finish. I make three different styles in the drying coat. We've already looked at the larger one, which is for the large gun dogs. This one here is for the, the in-between size on the gun dogs, which is the, the Springer Spaniel Border Collie sort of size. I've also does many other breeds, but it's, it's mainly that size. And the difference, at the, the front is the same, but the difference is at the back. And it has a closed back, like that. Now, you'll see there's an, the tail's not coming out at the moment, and a lot of people tell me, that they actually don't bring it out. While they're drying the, the dog in the coat, they actually leave it in. But it has a flap at the top, and I would advise that once the, the, the you finish doing the, the, and you've got it dry, if you're leaving it on, you actually take the tail out. But it then, but be very careful when you pull the dog's tail out, this is not a real dog, but be very careful that you don't actually hurt the tail. But that comes out like that and it gives you a really nice finish to the actual end of the dog, which is one of the harder places. Okay, so that is for Springer Spaniel Border Collie size and you still have the press studs underneath, the straps around the legs, everything else, it's just, it's closed at the back.
And lastly we come to the smallest of the coats which is for Cavaliers. There is a slightly larger version of this which is for Cockers and it has the press studs. But on the Cavalier one we just have just the strap and we have more sizes. So it actually is the drying coat that I started off my business with because I have Cavaliers and we um, this is what we've now ended up with which took quite quite a lot of work to get to this stage and it does all the things that you actually need uh, to make the, the coat lay flat in all the places that you want it to and um, the difference with this as you can see is it only has the strap the back end is like the medium size and it has the, the closed in back which you can take the tail out if and when you want to. But it is the same drying coat. It does the same job and it is just really just made easier and lighter for the smaller breeds to use. Thank you for watching my video. If you want more information on my products, please go on my website www.drydogcoats.co.uk Thank you. Live. Thank you for watching my video. For more information, <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> Harry.